Well, praise the Lord. Let's stand together this evening. We'll get our service started. Praise God. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, for each one that's come to the house of the Lord tonight, we pray a special blessing on them, Lord, as they have separated this time. Lord, to give to you, we ask that your blessing would fill this place tonight. Oh, God, we ask it. Give us, Lord, just the ability to praise you and worship you the way you deserve to be praised and worshiped tonight. Let your blessing, Lord, just rest on us, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship the Lord in spirit and in truth tonight. Amen. We waited for this day.
your glory,
that he's done for us today. Is that all right? And it, let's just see, like, if in our, in, in our singing today, we can testify. There's no God. There's no God. Come on, come on. Say, there's no God. There's no God like Jehovah. Why are you saying that? There's no God like Jehovah. 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 
never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never come stop on, come on, working come on, come on. even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're just worship the Lord in this house. As we were just worshiping and, and praising and singing that God's a miracle worker, I was thinking about Pastor Teached On. He taught on um, Job a couple weeks back. And Job said, despite everything, losing his family, losing his money, losing everything that he knew, everything that he had, it would be the equivalent to a millionaire losing everything. He said, though he slay me, in, in our language, even if I lose everything, even if my parents, my kids, my brother, my sister, my house burns down, even if the church burns down, I'm still going to trust him. That's how good he is. It's not that God wants to do that to us, but how many know God has our best interest in mind? That no matter what he says, no matter what he does, it's the right thing because all things work together for good for them who love God and are called according to his purpose. That means the addiction, that means the depression, that means the anxiety. The I want to know if there's anybody here that has a good track record with God. Like he's been good to you this week, last week, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Like he's been good. Like he might not have answered my prayer right now, but he's been good. Hallelujah. I wonder if we can just come to the front. Let's sing that bridge, uh, Pastor Nidra, and let's declare that he doesn't stop working. Even when I don't see him, he's still working. Why, why don't you do that with me? We're going to stir some faith up and just remind ourselves how good our God is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's sing it. Let's sing it to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I Stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. 
maker. You are the miracle worker in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. If he's been good to you, why don't you just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's real. He is real. He is real. And he's in this room right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for a couple needs here tonight. But you know what? I actually know what pastor's preaching on in prayer, right? Hallelujah. Wouldn't it be awesome if we were just came here, you know, all the heaviness gone, pastors teaching on prayer. How many know that the, the marks of a Christian is prayer? It's yeah, not church yeah, attendance. Yeah, yeah. It's not how well we can sing. It's prayer. Hallelujah. But what if we came here and we just brought our petitions to the Lord tonight and we were just ready to receive the, the teaching that pastor's going to be teaching on tonight? Hallelujah. Let's pray together. We're going to pray for Deshaun. You guys might know him. He's a little guy. He comes to our church sometimes, but he's in the hospital and uh, he has severe asthma, and he went in for an asthma attack. He was in the ICU, and uh, after that, uh, they found some blood infection in him. So he's been in there, and uh, and uh, we talked to him. I think me and Stephen, Stephen in here, and uh, I think I saw him come in. But and he was on the phone, and he said, "You know what? Tell the church to come visit me because they're all my friends there." Hallelujah! <laughs> but let's pray for him. Lord, we pray for Deshaun right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that what we feel in here, God, this presence would just touch him in the hospital, in the children's hospital, Lord. There's no one too far, God, from where you're at, Lord. You can touch him right where he is. And Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over him. I pray that you would raise him up. Let him, let us see him running around here again, Lord, and attending church, God. We command asthma to leave his body. Blood infection has to go at the name of Jesus, Lord, because your name and your blood heals and cleanses all diseases, God. And we give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. And we're going to pray for Miranda, actually my sister-in-law. She's in the hospital too, blood infection, um, having issues. But how many know God can heal her? God can raise her up. She's watching right now, I think. But let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, if you're watching, Miranda, I plead the blood of Jesus over you right now from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Lord Jesus, I pray that your, your breath would breathe on her right now, God. We know that you can heal. We know that you can cleanse and heal disease, God, because we've seen you do it before. Lord, do what we can't do. Do what the doctors can't do. Oh, God, we put her in your hands tonight, Lord Jesus. I command her body to function normally in the name of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood over her right now from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Lord, let her walk in here and let her see what you have done, God. In Jesus' name, let's clap our hands to Jesus. And if you have a need here tonight, why don't you just raise your hand up? Maybe you're, you're, maybe you're depressed or you're having some suicidal thoughts or something. Why don't you just raise your hand up? Father, in Jesus' name, every need in here, God, you know the needs before we even ask, Lord. We put them in your hands tonight. Lord, we're going to hear victories. We're going to hear testimonies. We know that the devil attacks because his time is short, God. Not because he has the victory. Not because he's won. But he has a short time, God. And that's why he's attacking your people. But Lord, we cancel every attack, every sickness, every discouragement 
judgment, every heaviness that would come against the people of God. And Lord, I pray for fresh breath in this service tonight. Let us leave here strengthened, oh God, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands one more time. Hallelujah. Why don't you say that? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm happy I came to church tonight. I feel refreshed in this place tonight. Amen. God bless you guys. You can make your way back to your seats. We're going to wait on you for your tithes and offerings. Uh, Brother Wayne, um, if we can get the offering plates up here at the front. Also, um, we can go to the Tithely app in the App Store or the Play Store. And uh, Sister Zonia, I believe, is in the back with the debit machine, if you want to give by debit or credit. And uh, if you haven't downloaded the Tithely app, I encourage you to do it. It's a great app, and uh, it's easy to give on there. But we can also give the old-fashioned way and just bring the gifts and the tithes and the offerings to the front here. God bless you guys tonight as you give. Sister Zanya's in the back. We're going to sing another chorus. Let's present our gifts and our offerings before the Lord. In Jesus' name, God bless you guys.
victory. We'll see the bright light shine. It's just about home time. I can see my father standing at the door. This world's been a wilderness. I'm ready for deliverance. Oh, Lord, I've never been this homesick before. Well, see the bright light shine. It's just about home time. I can see my father standing at the door. This world's been a wilderness. I'm ready for deliverance, my God. I've never, my God. Oh, see the bright light shine. Church is just about home time. Well, I can see my father standing at the door. This world's been a wilderness. I'm ready for deliverance. Sick before, and in my robe of white, I will fly away to that land so fair. I see my Jesus way up there. It's gonna be so grand when I get to that land in my robe of white. I'm gonna fly away. Oh, in my robe of white, I will fly away to that land so fair. I'll see my Jesus there. It's gonna be so grand when I get to that land in my robe of white. Tonight's gonna. Mm -hmm. Well, it's gonna be a wonderful time when we get to the other side. See my loved ones gone before. We'll depart there never more. We'll be walking on streets of gold, surrounded by riches untold. And when I look upon his face, I'll be saved by his amazing grace. And in my robe of white, I will fly away to that land so fair. I'll see my Jesus way up there. It's going to be so grand when I get to that land. In my robe of white, I will fly. Praise God. Anybody going to heaven? Anybody excited about going to heaven? The worse this world becomes, the more out of place we ought to feel. The more we ought to be looking towards the coming of the Lord. Hello? Hello? This world is not my home. I'm passing through. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. Let's not forget, Saturday night at 7 o'clock is prayer meeting here in the house of God. Amen. And we're looking forward to that. Let's, let's fill this place up with prayer warriors. Don't, don't, don't tell me you believe in revival when you don't pray. Don't tell me you want your family saved when you don't pray. Oh, got quiet on that. Mm, my Lord. Prayer moves the hand of God. We're going to talk on prayer tonight. Prayer is important. We're not going to see anything accomplished in this city 
unless we pray. So Saturday night at 7, let's be a prayer. Sunday at 11, baptism Sunday. We have, I don't know how many, six, six or so going to be water baptized here on Sunday. Yeah, that's exciting. <laughs> Praise God. We're looking forward to that and the great move of God. Amen. It's going to be here. Invite somebody. It's time for this church to be packed out. It's time we ought to be having two Sunday services here at Believer's Church. Let's pack it out. Praise God. And uh, then Sunday after service, anybody who wants to be involved in our outreach team, we want you to stay after the service just up front here for a few minutes. We're, it's, it's not a commitment at that point. We're going to find out how many want to be committed and how many is going to get involved. So if you want to come and hear about outreach and you're interested in outreach this Sunday morning, directly after the service, stay, and we're going to talk to you about that, and we're excited about that. Amen. Men, I'm just letting you in on the secret. Some of those of you who are at the last men's meeting, you already know, but I believe, when is our men's meeting? July 8th. July 8th at 7.30. Our men's meeting, Sister Heather's not here. She had a, a family uh, thing to deal with tonight, as did... Uh, Bobbits, they're attending something for their their uh, granddaughter tonight. So many others who called and said they weren't going to be with us. Amen. But uh, those who here here at our men's meeting, you knew that. Uh, and if Sister Heather was here, I bragged, but she's not. We're having our men's meeting on Je on July the eighth at seven thirty at Joey's Fish and Chips. Yeah, the owner is bringing us in at 7.30. It closes at 8. We're going to be seated at between 7.30 and 8. And then Believer's Church has the entire restaurant to ourselves. You can amen all you want, Michelle. You're not a man. You can't come. I'm just teasing her. <laughs> but I'm glad she's excited. Is there any men excited? Amen. And so it's, uh, I, would, I would bring 20 bucks to cover your meal. Now listen to this. The, from what I understand, I have to call back. But from what I understand, they are uh, going to just charge us um, the cost of the food. And then whatever is above and beyond that, they are going to give back as a donation to our men's group. So this is what I want us to do. So come, we're going to pay our, everybody's, I'm not paying the bill. Everybody's paying their own bill. But I want us to bring an extra, whatever you can afford. And Brother Selassie is going to be cooking and serving. He's trying to find another waiter to stay or waitress to stay late and help him. We are going to bless those people with our tipping. Hallelujah. So men, bring an extra, whatever you can afford. And we're going to bless those people. Bless our brother, amen, and uh, let them know that we, we appreciated what they did. So you'll be hearing more about this. We're going to get a sign-up sheet, but I, I just wanted to tell the few men that were here tonight about that. Amen. Praise God. And then we have our fun, family fun day coming up. We're looking forward to that in August. And then in the, in the fall, we're going to be doing something called All Nations Sunday. We're going to be celebrating all the different diverse cultures in our church having potluck after going, we've got some great things going to be happening here in the coming months I'm going to let you remain seated as we turn to the book of Matthew chapter 6 and I do want to bring you some teaching from the word of God tonight Matthew chapter 6 and verse 5 Jesus is talking here and he says this and when thou prayest thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy father which is in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth the things you have need of before you ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. 
Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive me and their trespasses, your heavenly Father shall also forgive you. But if you give not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Tonight, this is going to be a two-part series. Tonight, I'm going to talk to you about the basics of prayer. Say that with me, the basics of prayer. Next Wednesday, we're going to talk on advanced prayer. <laughs> the basics of prayer and advanced prayer. Father, I thank you for your presence, what you've already done in this service. I thank you, Lord, for these precious people that have come tonight. Lord, on this Wednesday, they're here because they want to be here. And Lord, we, we appreciate that. I pray that you would anoint me, Lord, to preach and teach your word. Anoint our ears to hear and our hearts to receive what you are saying to us. Help us to understand, to grow and develop as Christians. And I pray, Lord, that you would just bless, Lord, everything that's happening. And we ask it now in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen, amen and amen. So I want to talk to you. I've, I've been uh, talking to several people lately, and we've been talking about various topics. And, and uh, what I'm beginning... They're, they're saying, oh, I, I, I would like to learn about this, or I'd like to hear about that. And, and I've been saying, well, I, I preached a series on that, or I did a message on that. But then I'm beginning to realize that when I preached that, none of y'all were here. And so I want to go back and, and touch on some of the things that, I have, that I've covered here in the past. Uh, for those of you who were here, it'll be a good refresher. And, uh, but for those of you who are new to Believer's Church, we want, to, we want to get some of this teaching and preaching out to you. How many know that prayer is important? What is prayer? Prayer is simply communication between God and you. And the very, th the very fact of the matter is that prayer is so important. Uh, some, some people look at prayer as, as a tradition. It's just something we do. It's something you do to fill in time. It's something you do in a service to, because it, it's, it's a religious thing to do. But when you stop and think about what prayer really is, prayer is about humanity talking to divinity. The natural connecting with the supernatural. And next Wednesday, I'm going to talk about advanced prayer. When we talk about, amen, what the, what the Holy Ghost does for us, it's actually the divinity in us, the, the supernatural in us connecting with supernatural. But basic prayer, we just want to talk about basic prayer tonight, is humanity connecting with divinity. Divinity connecting with humanity. It is a two-way communication. Everybody say it's two ways. Prayer is not just me doing all the talking. Prayer is not just my list of, of wants and needs. Prayer is not just my uh, going through a religious duty. But prayer is communication. How many understand when I say God speaks to me? How many understands that terminology? How many could raise their hand and say you feel like God has spoken to you? All right, that's good. Because a lot of, when, I, when I say that sometimes, I, I, I kind of get people looking at me like, God speaks to me like, hello. It, this is God. It's not a big booming voice out of the sky. Actually, he used to do that in the Old Testament, and they prayed he wouldn't do that anymore. And so prayer, uh, when God speaks to me, it, he speaks to you in a still, small voice. He speaks to you. How many know he speaks to you from his word? How many know he can speak to you through a song or through a sermon? How many knows he can speak to you in the quiet moments? He can speak to you in the loud moments. God is not inhibited in any way. He can speak to you in your individual way. Oh, I want, I want to talk to somebody about that right now. He can talk to you in a way that you can hear him and in a way that you can understand him if you will just open up and, and allow that to happen in your life. 
Oh, the, the prophet was in the cave running, and, and, a, and a, the wind went by, and it wasn't in God. The Bible says that God wasn't in the wind. And then there was an earthquake, but God wasn't in the earthquake. But then there was a still, small voice. God will speak to you however he needs to to get your attention if you're willing to be spoken to. God is still speaking in 2022, but is anybody still listening? Oh, let the church be listening. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. So prayer is two-way communication. And Jesus gives this teaching, when you pray, don't be like a hypocrite. Ooh, there's some good advice. Don't be a hypocrite when you pray. Don't, don't pray with one eye on heaven and the one eye on your neighbor. Oh, God, you're lucky to have me, I tell you. I'm glad I'm not like the person beside me. They're in really rough shape. But God, I got it all together. Hallelujah. Don't pray like that. Don't pray to be heard. One of, one of the preachers we, we watched online a little bit, Jim Simbola from, from Brooklyn Tabernacle, made a statement. He said, he said, I'm terrified sometimes to give one of our pastors the microphone because when they, when they get up to pray, they want to quote the whole book of Leviticus. People think it's my moment to shine. And they, I've seen preachers change their voice when pastor so-and-so, will you come pray? Holy God of the universe, we bless you today, almighty God. Who is that guy? No, no, don't be like that. Talk to God normally. How many knows you don't have to use King James Version language to talk to God? God is, I love us, thou us. You are the greatest goddess to me, is hallelujah. You don't have to talk to God like that. Do you know how I talk to God just like I talk to you? Lord, I love you today. I need you this morning. I'm driving to work this morning. I'm praying, oh, God, be with my children. Cover them with your blood. Keep them, Lord, from all sickness, pain, disease, from every virus, from school violence. Oh, God, cover them with your blood. Keep them in your hand. Let them serve you all the day. That's how I pray. Let them serve you. Lord, let them be great for the kingdom of God. That's how I pray as I'm driving. There's no these and thous and thus says the Lord's. And it's just talking to God. And if you'll listen, you'll find he speaks back to you that same way. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. They love to pray standing in the synagogues, in the corners of the street, that they may be seen of men. If you're praying to be seen of men, Christine, if you could start that timer. If, uh, if you're praying to be seen of men, the Bible says you've already had your reward. If you're praying just to, to get a pat on the back, or you, you've got your, your reward. He said, but when you pray, go into the closet. Go to your secret place. Shut the door. And, and, and your father who sees you in private will reward you publicly. Can I tell you a public anointing is because of a private prayer life. You've got to talk to the Lord. You've got to have that communication. Don't use vain repetitions, he tells us in verse 7. See, we can get in the habit when we're praying. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now that's not quite what he was, he was talking about. Don't get into mantras. But how many know us Pentecostals have our own mantras? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 That, that, that's, that hasn't, that's not prayer. Talk to God. Talk to God. I want to teach us how to pray tonight. Talk to him. Don't use vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think they'll be heard because they, they say a lot of words. God's not counting your words. God wants to know what's in your heart and what's in your spirit. Prayer reveals our... How many understand that, that prayer not doesn't change God? Prayer changes us. Prayer brings us into communication with Him. And when we're in communication with Him, then He can bring us into alignment with Him. He goes on to say, your Father knows what you need before you pray. But He still wants you to pray anyway. Amen. 
So he says, this is how, this is how you should pray. And then he goes into what we know today as the Lord's Prayer. Now, a lot, of, a lot of Christians have adopted this prayer, and this is when they pray, this is what they say, word for word. Now, hear me tonight. There's nothing wrong with repeating or praying word for word the Lord's Prayer. It's a great prayer. Our Father who art in heaven. Remember, I know I'm dating myself now, but how many remember when we used to say the Lord's Prayer in school? Yeah. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. There's nothing wrong with repeating that prayer. But more than just giving us a prayer to repeat, this, is a, this prayer that Jesus gave is a template of prayer. And that's what I want to teach you tonight, the template of prayer. So he goes on to say, Our Father, which art in heaven. So when he opens this prayer, he, he identifies who he is, our Father. So when we begin to pray, we, we call him our Father, mighty God, Prince of Peace, oh, Counselor, oh, Healer of my body. You're given accolades. The next part, our Father who art, hallowed be thy name. Holy is your name. Your name deserves to be praised. Your name deserves to be worshipped. So when you be, when you start into prayer, if you'll just start giving the, the, the name of Jesus, the name of God, praise and, and adoration and declare who he is in your life. How many realize that there's power in declaring he's God and I'm not? You're my father. You're the potter. I'm the clay. You're the father. I'm the child. You're the Lord. I'm your subject. And so it puts him in his rightful place. And it puts us in our rightful place. And then we begin to praise that name. Holy is your name. Glorious is your name. Magnificent is your name. Powerful is your name. Thy kingdom. So after, after you have, have lifted him up and exalted him and you've begun your prayer with worship. I've had people tell me that worship and prayer don't belong together. I look at them like they're crazy because the Lord's prayer starts with worship. My Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, I give your name praise. I give your name glory. And then after you have identified him, and after you've praised him and worshipped him, then the next thing on the list is we pray this. Amen. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. This is going to hurt us a little bit right here. Because how many times do we just rush into prayer? God, I need this. And we treat God like we're pulling up at Tim Horton's drive through can I take your order? That's not God. And so before we ever get to our needs, the Lord's Prayer is telling us to pray for the kingdom. Thy kingdom come. Oh God, let your will be established on the earth. Let your church go forward. Let your people grow and develop. Oh, God, let your kingdom go forward in power in the earth. Thy kingdom come. Lord, before I ever pray about my needs, I want to pray about your needs. Thy kingdom come. Lord, if there's a day and age we need the kingdom to come, it's today. We need the kingdom of God to be established in the earth. And the only way it's going to be established in the earth is through the ecclesia. So we ought to be praying daily for the church, for our brothers and sisters, for the leadership of the church, for pastors and missionaries and evangelists and Sunday school teachers and singers and worshipers. Your kingdom come. Thy will, O oh Lord. That's a hard one. Before I even get to pray, Brother Wayne, for what I need to pray about, I have to pray, Lord, your kingdom come and your will be done. Because what I'm about to pray about may not even be his will. O oh Lord, thy will be done. 
in earth, in earth, in the earth, on the earth. Let the name of Jesus be glorified. Let his kingdom be established. But how many also know that this flesh of ours is built of earth? Lord, let your kingdom come in my life. Let your will be done in my life. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. How many pray like this? Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom be established. Oh God, let there be revival in the earth. Let souls be saved today. And then after we pray for his kingdom, and then and only then can we begin to pray, give us this day our daily bread. After we've exalted him, after we've worshipped him, after we've prayed for his kingdom, after we've prayed for his will to be done, then we can get to our needs and pray, give me this day, God, everything I need to serve you, to work for you, to be fruitful for you. Give me this day my daily bread. And it's here that we can make our petitions known unto the Lord. When you follow this template that, that Jesus gave through the Lord's Prayer, you are putting God first in all things. You're putting His kingdom first. You're putting His will first. And then once that has been established, then we can call on our needs, pray for our needs and our kingdom, our circumstances, our homes, our businesses, our needs. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. Give me this day my daily bread. And forgive us of our debts. Are you ready? Forgive me, God, for my wrongs. Forgive me, God, for where I've gone astray. Forgive me for my failures. Forgive me for my mistakes. And as I'm praying for God's forgiveness in my life, the Word of God declares to us that it's here that we must also forgive others. <laughs> because we cannot be forgiven if we don't forgive. And as we pray for forgiveness, I repent often. I know there's some people who don't like that. I had a preacher take exception one day with me. He said, you only have to repent once. I said, that's not what the word of God says. I repent often. God, wash me again. Cleanse me again. Purge me. Apply the blood again. I want to be clean. I want to be holy. I want to be forgiven, God. And as I pray for forgiveness, I forgive anybody who has wounded me, hurt me, done anything to me. Lord, I release the hurts out of my heart and out of my spirit because it's only as I do that can I receive the forgiveness of God. You see, it's hard. Listen to me now. It's hard to believe God has forgiven you when you cannot forgive somebody else. When you're holding on forgiveness in your heart, it's hard to believe that you're forgiven. But if you live a life of forgiveness, and as you pray this prayer, oh God, forgive me, you must, you must forgive. Can I tell you, in this day and age, there is a spirit of offense in the world, and it has crept in the church where we are so quick to judge, so quick to condemn. We get so caught up with, with how the, the, the world has to, told us to feel about certain things. and The TV and news and government has told us how we're supposed to feel about certain things. And, and, and the whole world is angry. The whole world is offended. Racism, oh God. 
You've heard me say it a hundred times. I say it again. You cannot be racist and be saved. It's against the heart of God. It's against the heart of the church. But we got white people hating black people. Black people hating white people. White people hating indigenous people. Indigenous people hating white people. And yes, it's about time some of these things are said from our church pulpits because our churches have been silent on it. And we've got hatred in our pews and singing about going to heaven. Lord, forgive me. And as you forgive me, I'm going to forgive others. I had a man, and I understand, you know, what, what happened to his family was, was horrendous. And we, we all know what I'm talking about. Horrendous, horrendous, horrible. But that man who I'd never met before that day looked at me and told me face to face he wished I would die. He wished my little girl would be raped. My children would be gutted like a pig. I never met that man before. Or actually, that was a woman who I was trying to help because she was very sick. And as I was saving her life, these are the things that's coming out of her to me. Hatred. Hatred. And I want to tell us, these things cannot go into the kingdom of God. I don't care what color your skin, what your background, where you come from. If you are saved and a child of God, forgive me, God. And as you're forgiving me, I'm going to forgive everybody else. Praise God. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. Again, we're praying for ourselves. God, lead me. Guide my steps. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Lord, don't let, don't let me go into temptation. Don't let me go astray. Don't let me, don't let me be led astray. Don't let me get, get caught up in the world. Don't let me get caught up in my own thing. Lord, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. Keep my path straight. Keep me, Lord, on the straight and narrow. Keep me in the confines of your word. And then he goes. Back, he, he tells us to, to, to end our prayer with this again. For thine is the kingdom. Again, we started with declaring who he is. And we end by declaring that the kingdom belongs to him. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the glory. And we end our prayer by giving him praise. Giving him accolades. And declaring who and what he is. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. I want to recap this very quickly. In verse 9, our Father which art in heaven, we're declaring who he is. Hallowed be thy name. We're worshiping him. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. We're praying the will of God in the earth. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And then after that, we pray for our needs. And then after that, we pray for our forgiveness and we forgive others. And then after that, we pray that, that God would, would lead us and guide us and keep us from the things of the world and all the snares and the tactics of the enemy. And then after we have prayed that, then we end up again by giving him praise and glory and accolades and declaring who he is. And then the word amen simply means... So let it be. This is the template of prayer. Matthew 6, 14, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. He comes back to this again and makes it very clear. If you're going to pray, you're going to have to pray with a clean heart, with a forgiving spirit, and you're going to have to stand right before the Lord. Actually, the Bible declares to us that if we come to offer our gifts before the Lord and we remember that so-and-so has something against us, we're to go to them and make it right and then come back and give our gift to the altar, on the lay our gift on the altar. How many know it's so important as a child of God to have a right spirit? Amen. Are you doing all right? Martin Luther said this, to be a Christian without prayer 
is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. Prayer. Prayer. Billy Graham said this, the Christian life is not a constant high. How many know that? It's not a constant high. When people are feeling good, they'll serve the Lord. When everything's going great, they'll serve the Lord. But what about when things are not going great? He said, the Christian life is not a constant high. I have my moments of deep discouragement. I have to go to God in prayer with tears in my eyes and say, oh God, forgive me and help me. This is what prayer does for us. Charles Spurgeon says this, true prayer is neither a mere mental exercise nor a vocal performance. It is far deeper than that. It is a it is spiritual transaction with the creator of heaven and earth. Prayer is a spiritual transaction between you and God. Charles Spurgeon also said, if you believe in prayer at all, expect God to hear you. Don't just pray and think the words are just going out into the air. But when you pray, you expect God to hear you. He says this, if you believe in prayer at all, expect God to hear you. If you do not expect, you will not have. God will not hear you unless you believe he will hear you. But if you believe he will, he will be as good as your faith. Philippians 4, 6, Paul says this, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, what happens when you pray? The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. If you know how to pray, you'll know how to have peace. People who are always tormented and up and down. Have you, are you praying? I heard one preacher say, when people come to me for counseling, the first thing I say is, have you prayed? And if they say no, I tell them to go pray and reschedule. And most of the time, he said, after they pray, they don't come back for the meeting. Because when you know how to pray, you know how to have peace. James 5, 13, is any sick among you? I taught on this a couple Sundays ago. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he hath committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Your prayer is powerful. If you are living for God, if you are living a righteous life, if you are faithful before God, your prayer is effective. And your prayers change things. Your prayers, amen, have the power to affect the situation. How many believe today that when you pray, God hears you, first of all? When you pray, God hears you. Hey, one person, well, all right, let's go back to the beginning. How many believe when you pray, God hears you? Amen. And when you pray, things change. Praise God. Because it is a spiritual transaction between you and God. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Pray without ceasing or without stopping. How is that possible? You can't be at work mumbling under your breath all day. But you can be in a constant attitude of prayer. That at the drop of a hat, a child of God should be able to pray. You ought to be in the mode and in the, have the ability to call on the name of the Lord and have assurance that because I'm walking with God, amen, I can pray. And when I pray, something's going to change. Heaven's going to hear me. Hell's going to be affected. Praise God. 
And so you have to be ready. Amen. And you have to be in an attitude of prayer. Have your, have your spirit in the submission and your mind and your heart and your emotion that at any given time you could just break out in prayer. Praise God. And we train ourselves and we develop ourselves in Christ-like character in, in, this, in this fashion. Wouldn't it be terrible if somebody came to you and said, Hey, I'm having a rough day. Can you pray for me? Uh, just give me a few minutes. i, I got to go get right with God first. No. But we walk with God. And when we're faced with a situation... We're already in the attitude of prayer. We're already, amen, our, our spirit and our heart and our, our, our life is in line with God that we could just step out into prayer and have a spiritual transaction at any given moment where we touch the hem of his garment on somebody else's behalf. I am not a weakling. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I am a prayer warrior. When I pray, my Father hears me. When I pray, something changes in the atmosphere. When I pray, I have authority. When I pray, the devils tremble. I have authority in the realm of the Spirit. And when I pray, something is going to happen. Praise God. And you need to have that assurance as a child of God that I know how to pray. And when I pray, something happens every time. Every time. Hebrews 4, 16. Therefore, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. I don't come brashly. I don't come uh, uh, arrogantly. But I come with confidence uh, into the presence of God. And in the at the drop of a hat, uh, I can find myself in the throne room of God. And he will give ear to me. And I can make my petitions known before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Prayer. Prayer. It's not a prayer book. It's not repeat after me. It's not just say the same prayer over and over. How many when you were kids? Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. If I should live for other days, I pray the Lord to guide my way. I still remember that. But we ought to have grown from there. To be able to talk to God and have confidence that He hears me. Go boldly. Go boldly. Second Timothy 2, Paul again is saying, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath or doubting. So I wish men would just begin to pray everywhere. But you got to lift up holy hands without wrath and doubting. I'm going somewhere. Psalm 66, 18, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. You've got to live right. You've got to live holy. You got to be sanctified or or I know that's a that's a that's a religious word, it's a Bible word, but to, to be sanctified means to be separated unto the Lord. The old timers just say, I'm saved and sanctified. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Sanctified, I'm set apart to God. And I'm set apart that when I pray, I have power with God. Praise the Lord. Everybody doing all right? Some of you look like you're going to go to sleep on me. Praise God. I'm almost done. But if we, don't, if we can't get prayer, then nothing we do up here counts. If we can't get excited about prayer, we can shut the worship down, shut the preaching down. Let's just shut it all down. Because if we can't pray, we're just going through emotion and commotion. Prayer is the power behind everything we do. No prayer, no power. No prayer. No power. Prayer. 
And if I have iniquity, if I have sin in my heart, God doesn't hear me. Can I tell you, the only prayer God hears from a sinner is a repentant prayer. I know that we don't like that in 2022. The only prayer God hear, hears from a sinner is a prayer of repentance. God, I'm sorry. Either his word is true or it's not. He said, if you have iniquity in your heart, I don't hear you. 1 John 3, 19, And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts I'm closing with this because this is where it all comes down for a lot of us. We assure our hearts before him. For if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, we have confidence towards God. And this is why a lot of people have a lot of problems praying. It's because when they start praying, their hearts condemn. of iniquity and when we try to pray now listen if you try to pray and you've got iniquity in your heart you need to repent you need to get right with God if you're trying to pray and, and, and you know you've got sin in your life you've got to repent of that and get right with God but listen to me now if you know your, your sin is under the blood you know you've been washed you know you've been cleansed and the devil gets in your ear and tries to stop you from praying amen you need just to let him know hey I have confidence towards God I have confidence in the blood I have confidence in his forgiveness and so when I have when my heart is not condemning me I've got confidence toward God how do I get my heart not to condemn me. Apply the blood. Apply the blood. Let him wash us and cleanse us again. Prayer is so important. We ought to be praying for our children. We ought to be praying for our families, our marriages. You, If you're not married, you ought to be praying over your future husband or wife. Praying over your, I go to I go to work in the morning. I pray, Lord, help me, help me to do good at my job today. Help me to be a witness. Help me to be a light to somebody today. Prayer. If you are not praying, then I want you to understand right here and now. No amount of counseling in my office is going to help. No amount of self help books. No amount of YouTube theology is going to help. You've got, you must, you have to learn to pray. Let's stand together. I haven't preached this way tonight to try and condemn us, but I'm preaching this way to, to teach us how to pray, how to talk to God. It's not so much the words that are important but it's the posture of your heart. And it's the fact that you are talking to him. And we, we have killed a lot, of, a lot of people quickly because they get saved. And, and I, I've been in this thing a long time. And I've seen people saying, okay, well now you've been to the altar, so now you need to pray an hour every day. And that person leaves the altar, goes home, gets up, says, Sister Heather, I'm going to pray an hour today. So they get up in the morning and they sit at the table and they start to pray. And in two minutes, they've prayed everything they know to pray. And they got 58 minutes left and they get discouraged and quit. I know I've heard it a hundred times. It's not in the length of your prayer. It's not how fancy it is. I'm going to tell you some of my most profound prayers were not very fancy. They were born out of desperation some of them were screams. Some of them were moans. Some of them, I, uh, I couldn't even understand what was coming out of my mouth. I was crying so hard and blubbering. And, but God understood. I want to help someone today that, that maybe does not know how to pray. If, if, if no, nobody else gets anything out of this tonight, I want somebody to leave this place and be able to go home and just begin to pray, begin to talk to God begin to pour it out in your own words in your own language 
I'm not trying to impress somebody. I'm not trying to impress God. I'm not trying to use the fancy terminology. I remember, and I am closing, I know you're standing. I remember as a young Bible school student, they sent me to a certain church to preach. I was so excited. It was a bigger church. And, and uh, it was out of my home province. And, and uh, so we got there in the afternoon, Saturday afternoon. And the pastor met me and he said, okay, he said, there's a Wendy's right across from the church. Let's go grab lunch. And so we went to Wendy's and I ordered my, whatever I ordered, and he ordered his. And we went and sat down and, and he said, okay, let's, let's pray. So I bowed my head and closed my eyes. And, and all of a sudden I heard this commotion. Mighty God, oh heavenly Father, God of heaven. I opened my eyes. He is in the eye. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not exaggerating at all. I open and I'm like. And the whole restaurant stops. And they're looking at the crazy man. If I could have crawled under the table and went in a hole, I would have done it. The crazy things we do, thinking we're impressing God, impressing somebody. Listen to me. Leave this. No, we're going to do it before we go. Let's just talk to him. Let's, let, let's, let's, let's talk to him tonight. Let's, let's all close our eyes. Let's, let's, are you going to repeat this after me? And then after we're done repeating this, we're going to pray. We're going to talk to God. Are you ready? Are you ready? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now would you close your eyes? Would you raise your hands? We're going to go through the, this Lord's Prayer, but we're going to do it the way I just taught you. Are you ready? I'm going, to, I'm going to pray, but I want you to open your mouth. I want you to use your own words. Are you ready? Oh, Father of heaven, King of all kings, oh, royal, majestic King of kings, Lord of lords, you are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the first, the last. You're my God, my Savior, my friend, my healer. God, I worship you today. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. Your name is great and greatly to be praised. Oh, God, I pray that your kingdom would come in the earth. I pray, oh, God, for every pastor, every preacher, evangelist, missionary, every gospel worker. I pray for Believer's Church. I pray for the, the leadership there, oh, God. I pray for my brothers and my sisters. Help us, oh, God, to take your kingdom to the four corners of Winnipeg and beyond. Oh, God, let your kingdom come. Let there be revival in the earth. Let there be an awakening in our city. Lord, let there be a revival in our families, in our homes. Pour out the Holy Ghost in these last days. Oh, God, we pray today in the name of Jesus. Your will be done in our church. Your will be done in my life, oh, God. Your will be done in my family, in my job. Oh, God, as it is in heaven. Oh, God, I I bring my needs before you today. Would you heal my body? Lord, would you work a miracle for me? Oh, God.
God of heaven, would you bless my finances, Father? Lord Jesus, would you bless my job? Oh, God, would you make a way for me where there is no way? Oh, God. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me of anything I've done wrong. Forgive me, oh God, if I've offended anybody. Forgive me, oh God, for being complacent. Forgive me, Lord, if I've been lukewarm. Forgive me, God, if I've not pleased you in any way. And as I stand here, I release, God, all for unforgiveness out of my heart, out of my spirit. Lord, I want us to be right with you, and I want to be right with my brothers and sisters. Forgive Forgive me. Wash me with your blood. I pray, God, that you would lead me, that you would guide my steps. Lord, make my way straight. Your word declares the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. God, would you order my steps today? Oh, God, I pray in your name. Deliver me from every evil plan, every evil thought, every evil plan of the devil and of, and of hell, I pray. And, Lord, I give you praise because it's all for your glory. It's all for your kingdom. It's all for your namesake. It all belongs to you. And I worship you. And I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Oh, clap your hands in this house. And that's the template of prayer given to us by Jesus in the Lord's Prayer. Now, when you do that for the first time, you may do that in 30 seconds and run out of words. Do it. Do it. And tomorrow, do it again. You might reach a minute. And when you reach a minute, keep going. Because by next week, you might get to two minutes. And next month, you might be up to five minutes a day. Next year, you might be up to 50. Just pray. devil hates it when you pray. There's power in prayer. There's power. There's power. There's power in prayer. Before we go, only if you mean it, would you just raise your hands one more time? Would you pray, oh God? Lord, help me to become a prayer warrior. Help me to pray. Help me, oh God, to be that person. Lord, that when things go wrong, my neighbors know that I have, know how to pray. My children know that I know how to pray. My boss knows that I know how to pray. Oh God, I'm not praying for accolades. We're praying for results. We're praying to touch you and have a spiritual transaction. Yero shataya, setaya lavababoshe. Hallelujah. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Come on, pray a little longer. Pray a little longer. Talk to him. Use your mouth. Use your voice. Talk to him just a moment longer. Hallelujah. My God, something's happening for somebody right now. Come on. Maybe you need to just get your heart right. Go ahead. You need to let your heart to make your heart right with God so it stops condemning you. Oh, God, I want to be holy. I want to be pure. I want to be righteous. That I can have confidence when I come to you in prayer. Oh God. My God, I feel the power, the power of the Lord, the presence of God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God, I praise you. I praise you. Yeah. Lord, I want to be great in your kingdom. Mm. I want to be powerful in your kingdom. And so tonight, I take the step of learning to pray and becoming a prayer warrior. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my, the Spirit of the Lord is just hovering right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know how to sing, but I know how to pray. 
I don't know how to preach, but I know how to pray. I don't know how to do a lot of things, but I know how to pray. Whoa, I'm praying. Pastor, I'm praying for you. Saint of God, I'm praying for you. Oh, silver and gold have I none, but I can pray for you. Such as I have, give I thee. Let me have. Ah, I can't give you money, but I can I can have a spiritual transaction on your behalf. I can touch heaven on your behalf. God, I don't know who you are right now, but you've got heaven's attention. Go ahead, pray. Pray over your situation. Go ahead. Give it to God right now. Come on. We're going to dismiss here in just a minute, but God is moving in this house. Come on. Come on. Talk to him. Talk to him. Forget the these, the thous, the thuses. Talk to him. Father, I need you. Nobody can help me but you. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's me again, God. It's me again. Oh, I feel to tell somebody, keep on knocking. Keep on knocking. Be persistent. Keep praying. The devil's trying to tell you nothing happens when you pray. But he's a liar. And the fact that he's telling that to you is proof that something is happening. Just use your voice. Pray. Pray with your understanding. <sighs> Come on, the devil hates your voice. That's why he intimidates you. That's why he keeps you from shouting. That's why he keeps you from singing out loud. That's why he tries to take your testimony from you. He hates what comes out of your mouth. Come on, open your mouth. Right now, we're going to give it a few minutes. 